I'm Mike Sharp and welcome to Snorkel's Toolbox. On today's video we'll be discussing the daily walk around and inspection of the Snorkel Scissor Lift. Let's get started. Before we get started I'd like to once more point out that all this information can be found in the operator's manual. First we'll start with the batteries. Remove the caps from the batteries and make sure that the water in the batteries is a quarter inch above the plates. Next, we'll check all the electrical connections on the battery. Make sure they are tight. Next, move over to the gray plugs on the valve. Make sure each plug is seated into its connection point. Here we have the display screen for the unit. This shows us our battery percentage of charge. Also, it shows us our work hours of the unit. We can also use this display screen to do diagnostic work when needed. Next, we'll check our hydraulic connections on the valve. Check each connection, make sure it's tight and there are no leaks. The next step we'll do, we'll tighten the needle valve. Turn it all the way in go to the manual pump and begin to pump this up. This will release the brakes and allow the machine to be towed. Pump the hand pump until it becomes solid and you can't pump it any longer. Once you feel resistance on the pump, you'll be able to move the machine. To reset the brakes, you will turn the needle valve back out. Check the pump to see that the handle deploys all the way. This should reset the brakes. Next, we want to check our warning decals to make sure that they're legible and not missing. Next, we'll begin to check our hardware to make sure none is missing. We'll start on the scissor stack. Make sure that the clip is in the pin and that the bolt is in the clip. Next, we'll move on to the center of the stack, to the pins. Make sure that there is a washer and a snap ring retaining the pin. Again, to the front of the stack, we also want to check all of these connection points to make sure that the pins are secure and the bolts are fastened. Next, we'll move up to the platform. We'll check all the hardware on the platform to make sure it's tight. I like to start at the front of the unit and move my way back. Check all the hardware here. You wanna check your hinges to make sure that the rivets haven't loosened up. Check your locking handles for your rollout to make sure the bolts and hardware on it is secure. From the rear, we want to remove the bolt that secures the rear tray. Open the tray door. Remove the cover. And continue checking your electrical connections. A simple wiggle test on all the connections to make sure they are secure is all you need to do. Next, we'll want to make sure that the plugs that go into the back of the module are all snapped in and secure. At this point, we want to check the hardware for our steps, the hardware for the back of the platform that secures it to the stack, and also continue to check any of your other pins for your stack, the hardware that holds them in. We'll raise the machine and check a scissor stack. You'll want to raise the machine just high enough so you can check your cable routing you checking all your hardware on your stack. We'll want to check the bolt that connects the cylinder to the stack, make sure it's tight. And once you've moved to this side of the machine, continue checking all your hardware on the stack. We'll continue on this side of the machine, checking our hydraulic and electrical connections. Again, we'll start with the batteries. You want to open each cap. Look at the water level, make sure that it's a quarter inch above the plates of the battery. Continue on, checking all your battery connections. Make sure they're secure. 
Move over to your electric motor. Check the two cables on it to make sure they're secure. Here we have our sight gauge for the hydraulic oil. Make sure that the oil is above the level of the sight gauge. We have our filler cap here and we have two hose connections that we need to check to make sure there are no leaks on. One is here at the motor. The second one is here at the filter housing. Give them a quick wiggle, make sure there's no leaks or no drips coming off the fittings. Next, we'll continue checking the hardware on the stack, making sure we have no loose hardware. We also want to check the retaining bolts for our spindles, make sure they're secure, not loose. We'll continue on with our hardware on the platform, making sure each piece is secure. And last on this side, we'll go ahead and look at our decals. Always make sure that your safety decals are in place and are legible. Next, we'll go ahead and raise the machine a little bit and check the function of our manual lowering valve. The manual lowering valve is located at the front of the machine. It's a simple lever that you press that will allow the machine to descend without any electrical current. Always press it and release it several times to make sure this is working properly. First thing you can do when you enter the platform is check our extension deck to make sure it works properly. You want to extend it all the way down. Make sure both handles lock into place. Release our levers, our handles. Pull the extension deck back. Make sure they lock into place. Also here in the platform, we want to check to make sure all of our literature information is in our literature box. This should be your operator's manual and your manual responsibilities. These always need to be in the box. Also up here we have two danger decals. Make sure these decals are in place and easily able to be read. Next. We want to make sure that the machine functions properly, so we'll begin with the drive test. Make sure your e-stop's on. Simply drive the machine forward, backward. Then we'll steer it left and right. Switch the machine into the lift mode and raise and lower the platform. Note that when you're above 10 feet with the unit, it will be in a lower drive speed than when it is in the stowed position. To check this, simply raise the machine up. Once you're above 10 feet, switch it into the drive mode and it should drive slower than when it's in the stowed position. Go ahead and lower the machine back down. Check your horn. Also turn your e-stop off and make sure you have no functional control from the platform box with the e-stop off. Next, we'll start the test of the pothole procedure. For this, you'll want to use a two by four or anything that you can push underneath the machine between the skid and the ground to keep the platform skid from deploying. We'll simply slip a two by four underneath the machine Get back in the platform. Raise the platform approximately 10 feet in there. Once you're above 10 feet, you should not have any drive function. You can continue to lift the machine to full height, but all drive function will be disabled. And there you have it. That's the daily walk around of the snorkel slab scissors. Please check back often to the toolbox for more content. Thank you.